If you wanna make a lot of money as a creative real estate investor, then pay attention because in this video, I'm about to break down my five favorite strategies for finding smoking hot deals. What's going on guys? It's your boy Cody Sperber, The Clever Investor here and welcome to my training videos on YouTube. Thank you for being a loyal follower, subscriber and a video liker. Now with that out of the way, I want to break down my five favorite ways to source deals that I use as a creative real estate investor. Now these five ways, they're in no particular order. They all work extremely well, but they only work if you work the strategies, right? Lead generation, you know, it's kind of my thing. It's kind of what I'm known for. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that from a marketing standpoint, I have what's called marketing stamina. What that means is I'm consistent, right? I get it in my head. I almost become like an obsessed maniac. I love the idea of being able to creatively outmaneuver my competition so that way when somebody raises their hand and says, yes, I wanna sell my house, they think of me or one of my companies. All right, same thing with you. I'm consistent on YouTube because I want to gain a loyal following and I want you to come to Clever Investor for all your real estate investing educational needs. So I want to be omnipresent. I want to be uh, aggressive. I want to be consistent and I want to do it in a way where uh, I build a relationship with you guys. So the same thing I'm doing with you guys, you need to turn around and do the same with your prospects and your community. Uh, for your business and if you just mirror kind of what I'm doing and do the same exact thing, whether here on social or uh, one of these five strategies I'm going to teach you. Uh, and by the way, I just thought of something. Social is a bonus sixth strategy, right? We'll talk about that later. But just do the same things that I'm teaching you how to do. Match and mirror people playing the game at the highest level and you will win the game as well. All right. Got my handy whiteboard here. Uh, A.A. Ron's behind the uh, camera. Say what up, A.A. Ron? All right, A.A. Hey, Ron, just put a picture of yourself right here. All right. Perfect. All right, that's A.A. Hey, hey, Ron. You know, I think he put some ab muscles. He doesn't really look like that, but moving on. So, five lead gen strategies. People come to me all the time. They're like, Sperber, how do I generate leads? And, and I got to be honest with you. If your business has lots of leads pouring into it, you're going to make a lot of money. That's just the way it goes. You can kind of suck at real estate, but have a tremendous amount of, Leads coming in and think of yourself like a baseball player. If you just pitch after pitch after pitch, eventually you're going to connect and hit a, you know, get on base. I almost said hit a home run, but that might not be the case. But you'll at least hit the ball eventually. Um, and kind of my business philosophy as a real estate investor is I want to generate as many leads as possible, have all this lead flow pour pouring into my business, and then based on the deal itself, meaning based on the motivation and the needs of the seller based on my current resources and my current goals for me as an investor. However that lines up, I want to think of myself as a transactional engineer where I structure each deal uniquely to maximize the profits and maximize the benefits to all parties involved in the transaction. So I'm always trying to create a win-win scenario, win for the seller, a win for me, right? I truly believe that you don't need to go beat people over the head or steal their houses from them. I think you can run a very profitable real estate investing business and treat people very fairly at the same time. Um, and as long as they have all the information to make a sound decision and you uh, uh, are happy with the deal, then everybody gets what they want. So all these leads need to be pouring into your business. Each deal kind of takes on a life of its own. Sometimes I wholesale, sometimes I rehab. Sometimes I'm like, hey, this is perfect for my portfolio, buy and hold, and I'll keep it, right? But I don't know that going into in, uh, every day when I show up at work, I don't know whether I'm gonna wholesale today, rehab today, or buy and hold today. I just know that each and every day I am uh, generating as many leads as possible for my business. All right, with that setup out of the way, uh, what are my favorite lead gen strategies, all right? The market's constantly changing, and I've been through a lot of different evolutions, right? When I first got into the business, everybody was door knocking, right? I love door knocking. I would even love door knocking right now, and in fact, I'm in the process of building a big door knocking team. I love door knocking. 
but it's a lot of work and it's normally for a new investor, it's kind of difficult to build a door knocking team. You can personally go out and door knock and I highly recommend that if you got a list of foreclosures or something like that, go knock on some doors. Go through that experience, see what it feels like for you. But uh, when I first got into business, I started off door knocking, then I got into direct mail, then the world fell apart and the market crashed and we ended up uh, uh, doing a bunch of stuff down at the foreclosure auctions and REOs, which is bank owned houses, bought a bunch of bank owned houses, did a tremendous amount of short sales. And then the market kind of corrected itself. And then I got back into direct mail. And now we're doing these five main strategies that I'm about to share with you currently in today's market. So um, I've been through a lot of different variations. Every time you master a marketing technique or a lead generation technique, you're gonna have a certain window where it's kind of your sweet spot, you're kicking butt, but eventually it's gonna run its course and they're gonna move the cheese on you, all right? Don't freak out when that happens. You want to be the nimble, clever investor. You wanna constantly be able to maneuver. And the way I teach my students is, get, think of lead generation like spinning a plate. Spin one plate as fast as you can. Get it going, get it going, get it going. Don't try to spin four plates at one time, just like dominate one strategy, get that plate spinning really, really fast, and then spin the next plate, then spin the next plate, then spin the next plate. Uh, don't try to spin them all at one time or the plates will crash. I don't know who spins plates anymore, but that's the best analogy I got. So these aren't in any particular order, but I wanted to share with you what we're doing currently right now and we're focusing on. So um, one of the first things that we focus on because it's the path of least resistance, it's very easy for anybody to do. You could start doing this right now, is uh, going through agents. You should, for about an hour a day, if not more, be working the phones, going out to networking events, and doing whatever it takes to build relationships with local real estate agents. The, uh, the way I think about it is I have an area of town that I want to farm, right? Maybe it's an area where I want to buy properties to do rehabs. Maybe it's an area where there's a lot of cash buyer activity and I want to do more wholesales in that area. But once I pick my target market, it's pretty easy to see all the real estate agents that are working in that particular area. I call those agents and I build a relationship with them. And the key with working with real estate agents, there's a couple keys. The major key is consistency. They're very busy, right? And the reason I, I, when I work with an agent, I'm not just calling somebody and saying, hey, what houses do you got listed? I'd like to write offers on them. I call agents and I try to build a relationship with them so that way the next time they get a pocket listing or a pre-listing, all right, a pocket listing means it's not going live on the MLS. It is going to be shopped around through their brokerage and through their personal network, but it's never going to actually hit the MLS. A pre-listing means they know in two or three weeks the listing's coming, but if I can slide in there and write an offer before it ever hits the MLS, I can beat out my competition and get to it first. I also want an agent to call me if they know that they're about to drop price or they just dropped price and now it's getting into the range where an investor can come in and actually get a good deal. It's not easy to do because agents are very busy. They talk to a lot of people each and every week. They have their signs up. If they're li good listing agents, they have lots of signs up. They're getting lots and lots of calls. A good agent answers their phone, but they're getting a lot of phone calls and sometimes it's hard to break through and actually build a real relationship with them. So what I do, I do a couple things. The first piece of advice is come up with a hook, right? Every time I call somebody, I say, hey, what's going on? It's Cody Spurber, the clever investor, right? What's your hook? Are you Big John from Texas? Are you, you know, are you uh, cash buyer Christina? What's your hook, right? Come up with the hook. That's number one. So that way they can remember your name because they have met they meet a million Bobs and Bills and Sams and Steves. So try to set yourself apart. Next tip is the you gotta master the follow-up. So I became a master text follow-upper. Yeah, it kind of made sense. That made sense? Yeah, it made sense. 
I mean, it totally makes sense. All right. And so uh, I'll constantly, t- as soon as I get done having that initial conversation with them, I'll say, hey, listen, um, I'm going to call you, I'm going to text you right now a picture so you don't forget me. I'm Cody Spurber, the Clever Investor. I hope you never forget me and I hope we can build a real profitable relationship. Uh, you know, I want to buy, buy a lot of houses this year and do a lot of deals and I'd love to make some money with you. As soon as we hang up, I said a picture of something weird, me doing something weird. Um, and I actually stole this concept from a guy that I met at a networking event that told me he was into fishing. And then literally eight seconds after walking away from him, I get this picture of him holding the world's freaking biggest trout I've ever seen. And he's got the biggest shit eating grin on his face. And I never forgot him since then, right? And I was like, that is a brilliant idea. So what I like to do is I get out a a hundred dollar bill or some bill, write the agent's name on it, right? Or write your name on it, hold it up and take a selfie or have somebody take a picture of you and then send the agent a picture of you holding up some money with your name on it or their name on it. Uh, Just get creative and text him and say, hey, thanks for chatting with me. I'm gonna follow up with you here in two weeks. Uh, I hope it's okay if I just text you every once in a while and check in with you if you have any pocket listings, uh, pre-listings, properties that are dropping in price where you need a cash offer, hit, hit me up, all right? And by doing that, I always break through eventually. And then once I get a good relationship going over the phone, if the agent is starts sending me deals, maybe they set me up on an uh, uh, auto search for on the MLS for any deals. If I'm getting a lot of good deals sent there the, from them and I like them, then I'll take it to the next stage, which is, hey, would you like to go grab coffee or meet me at the bookstore or you know go to a networking event with me or whatever and actually meet them in person. All right, so agents, work the agents. That's their job. They have their finger on the pulse. A good agent is worth their weight in gold. And I love working with agents because it's leverage. Imagine if you had 20 agents bringing you deals every month. That's you times 20. And they already speak the language of real estate and you could get a lot of very profitable deals uh, from agents, all right? Number one, what do you think? Yeah, keep going? All right, if you subscribe to my channel, or or actually, you know what? Let's do this. If you subscribe to my channel right now, and you click the like button, and you leave me a comment, I'm gonna give you a special gift. I hope I can fulfill on that. I'm gonna give you a special gift. If you subscribe to my channel, click the like button right now, and leave a comment on this video. All right, I'll reply with how you can get your special gift. All right, moving on. Next one. Dial for dollars. Dial for dollars. You might be saying, what the heck are you talking about? I have a guy right now, all day long, he's sitting in a cubicle in front of a computer. He's got a headset on. He's got an auto dialing system uh, ran by this company called Mojo, M-O-J-O, I forget, I'll put the website down below. Um, But uh, he uses a, we use a service called Mojo, which is a three line auto dialer. I think we pay like a hundred bucks a month or 140 bucks a month for the three line dialer. And uh, what we do is we go and we buy a list, a targeted list of certain types of homeowners. So maybe it's a probate list or a tax lien list or a foreclosure list or an absentee high high equity list, vacant property list. We pick our target and we buy a list. Just like the first stage of doing any direct mail is you gotta buy a list. You gotta know who you're gonna mail. Um, Same thing when you're dialing for dollars, you gotta figure out who you wanna call. Step one is you buy a, a list from a data provider. All right, if you have the deal automator, which the link is down below of the software that I use for my business, you can pull all the lists you want from the deal automator. Um, Or you can go to a data company and you can buy a list. All right, one of my favorite data companies is Listability, right? I use Listability all the time. And if you call them and say, hey, Cody from Clever Investor sent me, they'll hook you up, right? But uh, if you want an absentee owner high equity list, you go to Listability. Or you go in the deal automator and download it for free. Step one, you pick a list, then you take the list and you skip trace it, right? And you skip trace it using a skip tracing service like datafinder.com 
or batchskiptracing.com. And if you use uh, either one of them, there's a little place where you can put in a promo code. And if you put in the word clever investor, you'll get a discount. Um, skip trace the addresses and you'll get about a 40 to 60% match rate with phone numbers. And basically what we're doing is we're taking an address and a homeowner's name and we're skip tracing what their phone number is. Once we get their phone number and we get a big list of them, let's say we get 5,000 phone numbers, we'll stuff them into Mojo and our guy on the phone will sit there all day long running a three line auto dialer dialing for dollars. Basically cold calling homeowners to, and pitching them on, hey, how would you like to receive a cash offer on your property? We've been doing this for a long time. It's one of the best lead gen strategies out there right now. Um, I haven't done a lot of videos like that on YouTube yet because it's you know, one of our secret type of strategies that's really working really well right now, but I do teach our mentoring students and all of our uh, course train, uh, students that strategy. So uh, at least now you have the concept, dialing for dollars. All right, next one. I put out a video about this. Uh, I don't even know when this is gonna come out. I guess, I guess it would be Friday. I put out a video and you're watching this on a Monday when it originally launches, but you might be watching this on a Tuesday, but we filmed this, fil film this on a Friday, but you might be watching this on a Wednesday. Could be a Thursday. Whatever you're watching, you're watching. You're watching this because you're watching this and it's happening now. So I put out a bandit sign video the other day and the number three lead gen strategy is bandit signs. All right, I love bandit signs. They're those little plastic corrugated roadside signs. Uh, they cost about a buck for a sign and a buck for a wooden stake and some nails and you go stick them up all over town. If you wanna learn more about that strategy, I don't wanna spend too much time in this video because I did a whole entire video on it. So go watch that video. Um, I love bandit signs. On average, it's taken me about 600 to 700 bandit signs to get one completed deal. On average, I make about $12,500 as a wholesale fee for a completed wholesale deal. So if you run the numbers, if it costs me about 1,200 bucks to make 12,500, you can see why I do it, right? And uh, at any given point in time, we like to have five or six or 700 bandit signs out in our target markets. Um, best piece of advice with bandit signs is don't place them in nicer areas of town. Put them in lower income working class neighborhoods. Not only will the bandit sign stay up longer, that's also where the cash buying activity typically is because people can afford to pay cash for those types of houses and the, you're not gonna get as many fines or uh, hassled by law enforcement or city code people because they don't really want you putting out those signs. So uh, go watch that video. It's gonna break down 10 of my best strategies for dominating with bandit signs and it also breaks down the wholesale process and all the KPIs with bandit signs. So that's bandit signs. Next one is direct mail. All right. If you're already dialing for dollars, you might as well send them a mail piece. Now there's different levels of direct mail. Something as simple as just sending somebody a yellow letter, a little handwritten yellow letter saying, hey, I noticed your property looks vacant or abandoned uh, or distressed. If you'd like to get a cash offer, me and my wife would, are looking to buy a property in the area, give me a call, right? That's like a little one-off yellow letter, or you can send little cheap postcards, uh, you know, mail costs, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, 45 cents a postcard, something like that to send a postcard. And uh, I love sending postcards to the same people that I'm dialing for dollars. So if I pull a tax lien list, I'll send off a mailer, then I'll start calling. And it even gives me a reason when I cold call them to say, hey, did you get my mail that I sent you, right? Direct mail is extremely effective. The key with direct mail is to match up the, you gotta get good quality data. You gotta match the data up with the right marketing piece. And on that marketing piece has to have the right copy, right? If you don't know what copywriting is, copyright, it, uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, sales is written, the written word of sale, sales. That didn't even come out. Can I talk right now? I can't even talk right now. The written word of sales, right? That's copywriting. And so if you've ever gone to any of my 
websites or anything like that, you'll notice if I'm trying to sell you something, there's stories built into it. Um, there's, you know, powerful words being said, there's headlines, there's strategic hooks and things in there where we're trying to get you emotional and excited about something. So, uh, there's an art form to it. It's not just, Hey, I want to buy your house for cash. There's actually an art form to it. So, uh, you have to have the right data with the right marketing piece. So maybe it's a postcard, maybe it's a letter, maybe it's a, uh, you know, a long form letter, a short form letter. There's different colors, and then you got to have the right sales copy on it. That includes the headlines, the call to action, all that stuff. When you line up all of those things, that's when the magic happens with direct mail. All right, but I, I'm heavy on mail. I think you have to send, just like bandit signs. Somebody has to see your bandit sign like 11 or 12 times before they're probably going to call on a sign, right? Direct mail, it might be even more. Direct mail is a long game. So I might send the same person 20 or 30 of uh, direct mail pieces before I get anything back from them. But what happens is it's like a hockey stick. It's like a, a return all of a sudden I get where I get a massive amounts of results based on like my 14th direct mail or my 15th time I've touched them. All of a sudden it hockey sticks and it's like, yes, that's where all the deal flow is. Um, so don't get discouraged if you send direct mail on day one and you don't get the results you're looking for. By your third, fourth, or fifth mailer, you're going to start getting those results. And by your 10th, 12th, 14th, 15th time, it's a massive amount of results, right? They come flooding in. And the last one is co-wholesaling. All right. Wholesaling is the art of finding a property at an extreme discount from retail, putting that property under contract, then shopping the paperwork around to landlords and rehabbers, and when one of them steps up and says they want it, you play matchmaker, put the deal together, everybody wins. The seller gets what they want for the property, the end cash buyer gets a good deal, and you, you in the middle get paid a matchmaking fee. That's wholesaling. Well, there's two sides to a wholesale transaction. There's the acquisition side and the disposition side. The acquisition side is when you go out and you work with homeowners and you put houses under contract. The disposition side is where you go out and you work with cash buyers and you bring the buyer to the table. Well, a lot of times I'll go out and I'll network with other wholesalers in town and I'll say, it's like I, I have, I want conversation. I have two cash buyers that are looking for these types of deals. What do you have? Well, I have this and I have this. All right. And then I will, and then I'll say, hey, if, if I bring a buyer, can I get paid? And they'll say, sure. So then we will co-wholesale the, de the deal together. They'll source the deal, I'll sell the deal, we both get a matchmaker fee in the middle, we split whatever we make 50-50. That's co-wholesaling. Vice versa, I might say, hey, I got a deal, I need you to help me move it. Do you have any cash buyers that are looking for this type of deal? They'll bring the cash buyer to the table, then we'll split the wholesale fee. So I do, uh, this is a great strategy when you're brand new because that means you can lean in on only one side of the transaction. You don't have to learn the whole business. You could just say to yourself, I wanna hide behind my computer and all day long I'm just gonna work social and I'm gonna work my connections to build a cash buyer list. And I'm gonna build a badass little list of every rehabber and landlord in town. And then I'm gonna go around, once I build my list, I'm just gonna sell other wholesalers properties to my list and I'm gonna get paid a whole, uh, wholesale fee. And I know a lot of people that do just that side of the transaction. I actually have another video that we did um, that actually went a little viral where we were talking about the top tips to building a cash buyer list. So go check that video out. But I love co-wholesaling. We do a lot of co-wholesale deals. And now you can kind of see when you add it all up, you get one plate spinning, you work the agents, you get the follow up, right? They learn your name, you build rapport with them, you go and meet them in person, build a real relationship, they start bringing you deals, now you got 10, 20, 30 agents bringing you deals, then you move on, you, you do it yourself in the beginning, you get your headset, you buy your list, you skip trace the phone numbers, you smile and dial, now you're dialing for dollars, that'll get you one, two, three, four deals a month, then you get that going, then you hire somebody else to sit in your spot, now they're doing that, now you go down to bandit signs, you master putting out bandit signs, you watch my video, you master the art form of putting out bandit signs, you do that for a month or two, get six, seven hundred bandit signs out at every, any given time, now you're getting one or two or three deals a month from bandit signs, then you, you document, systematize, outsource, hire that out, 
go to direct mail, get that down. I actually have a direct mail course down below if you want to learn more about direct mail. I give you all my proven marketing pieces. Uh, it's called the direct mail deal maker course. The link will be down below. Teach you direct mail, how to get the list, what marketing pieces to use. You can even steal my sales copy. Um, now you're dominating direct mail, getting a couple deals a month from that, and then you build relationships with every wholesaler in town, build a massive cash buyer database, now you're co-wholesaling. Yeah, start adding it up, one to two deals, one to two deals, one to two deals, all of a sudden you're doing 10, 12, 14 deals. And like I said, my average wholesale fee is 12,500. Now you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. And then the game has changed, all right? You get to wear what you want, do what you want, put your name on your hat, you're the boss, right? You're the man with the plan or the woman with the plan and you can come back around and say, Cody, I'm so glad I subscribed to your channel on YouTube and I started watching all of your videos. That's all I do now. I don't even watch normal TV anymore. I just watch Cody Sperber videos. And that's what you should be doing because I'm gonna teach you how to make 2019 the most profitable year ever. And now you know my five favorite strategies. Until next time, I'm Cody Sperber, the Clever Investor. Down below, click the links, subscribe to the channel, like everything of mine, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, comb your hair, Sperber out. <laughs> hey listen, while you're here, right after you subscribe to my channel, go ahead and grab my free book, How to Flip Houses with Little No Money Down by clicking the link down below in the description. It's my gift to you, and it's a step-by-step -step guide on how I got started in real estate and how you can too. Hope it helps.